Okay, so I thought about which order to do this in, but uh, it's always chicken and egg scenario when it comes to programming. How does Ag Open GPS work versus how does the Arduino work? So since this is about the Arduino, that's exactly where we'll start. Now, Ag Open GPS sends a, a collection of data to the Arduino. It's the, the um, whether or not to turn the relay on or turn the hydraulics on, that sort of thing. And it's the job of the Arduino to keep checking what that data is and do the right actions accordingly. So we're going to transmit data to the Arduino. The Arduino will do its thing and then the Arduino can send information back to AOG so it knows what, uh, what it's done. So what all do we need in order to do that? Now this is a, a cut down version of the, of the quote unquote real thing that uh, is machine control, but this is maybe just easier to understand because there's, there's less going on. Okay, so one of the first things we have to talk about is this loop time. Now remember we did our setup, which runs once, and then loop, which runs forever. Now the loop, it runs really, really, really fast. So we don't want to check the, the relay 8 million times a second, or can turn the relay off and on 8 million times a second. So what we do is a little trick, and we use this thing called millis. And what millis is, is a little function that comes back and says, how many milliseconds since the Arduino has started have elapsed? So it'll go like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, just like setting the delay in, uh, in the original relay program. And so we read what the current time is. And then we check what our last time was. So our loop time is 200 milliseconds, which is about five hertz, or five times per second. So it keeps counting up. So it's like 1,000, 1,010, 1,020, da, 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 all the way up to 1,200. So if we see our current time is, is 1,200 and our last time was 1,000, we know that it's equals to or greater than our loop time. So if it is, then let's do this loop thing. If not, drop out the bottom and just do this again. So this check happens very, very quickly this loop, this timed loop, it checks it, checks it, checks it very quickly using our current time, but only every 200 milliseconds does this actually run. So then we save the last time for the next time we want this to run. Our watchdog timer, that's just counting these loops, and if it counts up, that means we've lost connection because we reset it to zero when we, we get new data, but we'll look at that later. Same with the serial reset timer. If it's not getting new information, then this timer counts up, or the buffer's full, or that's really So this is just like a little bit of a maintenance thing here that happens. All right, so if our watchdog timer is greater than 10, meaning we haven't got new information from AOG, what we'll do is we'll set the relays to zero and shut them all off. Otherwise, well, anyways, we will set the relays, which we will go down to here. And this is a little different than digital read or different than digital write. This is a very fast way of doing things. So what bit read means is we read in relay low, which is a byte that comes in from the AgOpen GPS, as you recall. We want to take bit zero, like the first bit or section one. And if this is a one, we want to set it to port D, relay one. If it's not, then we want to clear. So that's how we turn on and off the relay. So all this does is it, it goes through all the individual bits. Here's the first bit, here's the second bit. Remember, we only have two relays. And it reads that bit, and it sets the relay accordingly. Really, really simple. Now, getting back to the beginning of the program. Here we define relay one as our pin four, and relay two as our pin five. And the setup is normal. Serial begin 38400, because 38400 is what the Arduino or the AOG wants to talk to this thing at. And we set our output pins for the relay one and relay two. Now the loop we've kind of already started. And once we set the relays, then we print our data back. Relay high, what was it? Relay low, what was it? GPS speed. Now you're probably asking, how do we get these in the first place? Look, it's the end of the timed loop. So this just runs and runs. Where the heck does it actually get the information from? Well, it's constantly checking the, the serial port for data. 
And if serial is available as greater than zero, that means something is there. We read that information and we store that in a temporary variable. Now I think you've heard us talking about PGNs and that sort of thing. The first two bytes define what that data is. So if we take those two bytes and turn them into an integer, move one over eight bits, add them together, combine these high and low bits, if that header is 32,762, then we found data because what comes after it is the data. Now, if it was 32,760, it would be auto steer data or Arduino settings or whatever. And so we just, we look for more and more of these if we wanted to, if we want to send different packets of information. So if we found 32,762, is data found is equal to true. So we found data. So now we go, if there's our eight bits, meaning greater than seven, if there's eight bytes in the serial buffer, and it's actually machine code data, then do this. Now we just read it. Is data found? We'll reset the flag to false so it doesn't keep doing this over and over. And then now we just read the bytes as they come in that they were sent from Agopen open GPS. So our relay high, our relay low, our GPS speed, U turn tree, and hydraulic lift. We read them all from the serial port. And since there's only six, we just ignore the last two and just read them anyway. We reset our watchdog timer to zero. Remember, if that goes above 10, there's something wrong, shut everything off. Our serial reset timer, same way. We've just received data so that we know our, our serial reset is just fine. And that's it. That's all it does. Here we're back to uh, set relays. This is the end of the, of the uh, loop. You can see it's void loop. We uh, are set up and loop. And so functions on their own, if they're part of the individual INO, this just gets called and comes down here, runs this again. If bit read, bit zero is, is one, turn it on. If it's zero, turn it off. Okay, so now let's upload this to the Arduino. Make sure we're on COM6, which we are, and upload it. Uploading, we've all seen this a thousand times before now. It should be pretty common. Okay, so now we have the code in there. If we turn the serial monitor on, you'll note that it's running at five hertz. Of course, everything is set to zero. So that's exactly what comes out here. What's the relay high, relay low, GPS speed, that sort of thing. If we said relay high, if we put this as 16, now uploaded it again. There, our relay high is 16. So now we know what's working. So you can kind of use this as a troubleshooting monitor. It's a little tougher when it's hooked to USB because Ag Open GPS wants to steal that port. But you get an idea how you can start checking things using the, the serial port. So let's upload the proper version. And then we'll run Ag Open GPS. Okay, so now we've got Ag Open GPS running. What we want to do is, of course, connect the serial port. And it says machine module not connected, COM6. Now, as soon as we hit connect, there's our numbers. And see, the, the third one was GPS speed. Now it rounds it off to be just a straight integer. But we can see we're going at 2.2 kilometers an hour. So that's the information coming back. So we know that there's valid information. If we change the speed here, that won't work. If we change the speed here, There, now it's five. So we know that that's talking. And here's what we're sending it. We're sending it, here is that 32762. Remember that was the header for determining whether or not the stream was. And here we're sending relay high, relay low, the GPS speed, tree, and hydraulic lift, that sort of thing. That all just gets sent off to the uh, serial port. So those are important things to see. And that's why they're here on the form. Okay. So now we're connected. Now we should be able to just start a field. Let's turn on our webcam. And as soon as we hit this, tick, our relays come on. I want to turn one relay on. So let's look at our module info. 
Now this guy, always in the way. You can see the machine control. If we turn the relays on, see the little one come on there? Might be hard to see. Turn him off. Uh, of course, there's a delay of the turn off time. But if we turn two on, tick, tick, section low. Section one is on, section two is on. Here's that, the uh, header code. There's our speed sent it four times. All that sort of thing. Okay, so if we look at our Arduino configuration and the machine, we can see the individual little bytes here. And then to set the hydraulic tool and the lift and that sort of thing, all we do in the code is just add another one of those headers and we decipher this information and we put it in the EEPROM of the Arduino. And that's the way it works. It just individual specifying what those headers are, we can send multiple pieces of information. Okay, so here's the code for the Arduino Auto Steer USB. And there's a lot more information here. Maybe we'll have to go through this sometime, but you can see that all these different headers pick and choose which one of these we want. Do we want auto steer data? Do we want settings? Do we want uh, machine data? So here's that 32762 again. If there's machine data, then set that true. And if we get eight bits and the data is found, or if the machine is found, and if, or if it's a machine specific uh, PGN, then read that information. And that's all you do is you just repeat this. This is like the Arduino settings. And here is the actual steer settings, like your counts and your steer zero and that sort of thing. So you can just see, you just rinse and repeat. You do these things over and over again. And But once you understand the basic of how one works, see it's the same loop. There's the same setup. Writing to the EEPROM, the information. And there's our same loop. This time we're running at 100 milliseconds instead of 200. This is for auto steer. So hope you get an understanding a bit of, uh, of how it talks back and forth and just how important it is that everything works and everything is connected. Otherwise, nothing knows that it's there. Okay, thanks.